In this video, we're going to climb up Calton Hill, visit Holyrood Palace and the Queen's Gallery, then walk up High Street, and then finish up at the Scottish National Gallery. Calton Hill is a really great spot right in the heart of Edinburgh. It's got some of the best views in the city and several famous monuments and landmarks like the National Monument and the Nelson Monument. This is one place you don't want to miss. Here we are looking out over the River Forth as it empties into the North Sea. As we swing over, we can see Leith, where the Royal Yacht Britannia is docked. Now we can see the Royal Palace Holyrood House, and then we swing over to see the Scottish Parliament sitting below the Salisbury Crags, which are volcanic. This is the Nelson Monument, and we'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, as we turn towards the castle, you can see the Royal Mile, and below it, Waverley Station. We are now looking down Princess Street at the Balmoral Hotel and the Walter Scott Monument, and we turn to look towards Newtown. But it gets even newer here. This, in fact, is a very modern area which contains the Omni Shopping Center, a stark contrast to the rest of the city. Now we turn our attention to the Nelson Monument. It was built in the early 19th century to honor Admiral Lord Nelson, who died during the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. It has a statue of Nelson, and you can also climb to the top of the tower so that you can get views of the city. And there is a very good telescope that can be used to view the surrounding landscape in greater detail. We can now see the National Monument. It was built also in the early 19th century to commemorate the Scottish soldiers and sailors who died during the Napoleonic Wars, but obviously it was never finished. It was designed to resemble the Parthenon in Athens, and even though it was never finished, it's an important historical landmark in Edinburgh. As we walk down from Calton Hill, we pass a lot more of Edinburgh's history. And then we start down Princess Street before heading over to High Street and the Royal Mile. It was interesting to come across this plaque of St. Voldemar the Great, who was the ruler of Ukraine in 988. The old city is built on a hill as it leads up to the castle. If you're coming up from Princess Gardens or the Waverley Station, be prepared for a few steps to get up to the top of High Street.
many of the stairways leading down are actually closes, which are narrow alleyways or passageways that run between the buildings in the old town of the city. They're typically named after the most prominent building on the close, and many of them have rich history and heritage, and they date back hundreds of years. They're narrow, atmospheric, and some even can taste such things as restaurants. Below the castle is the grass market area, which is really in the heart of Edinburgh's old town. Uh, it was once a marketplace, but now is filled with pubs, restaurants, and shops, and we had some wonderful food there. The area also has a dark past because it was the site of public hangings and executions. Some of the restaurants reflect that dark past, including Maggie Cole's restaurant, who was supposedly executed here but woke up in the coffin on her way to be buried. William Burke and his partners used to go around and kill people so that they could get the bodies to doctors to dissect. After he was executed, he himself was dissected. In spite of the fact of the rather horrific past, the restaurants on Grass Market are just wonderful. And we did manage to get a really, really good meal. After being satisfied with our dinners, we head back down High Street to our hotel and were treated with awesome sunset views of the city. The next day we head over to St. Giles Cathedral, which was built in the 14th and 15th century. Uh, there have actually been churches there for much longer. It's a Gothic building and the cathedral spire is 160 feet tall and it's capped with a weather vane in the shape of a golden thistle, which is the national emblem of Scotland. This is where John Knox started the Protestant Reformation in Scotland going against the Church of England, and this is where Presbyterianism started. While we wandered through, we came across this group of young people rehearsing Vivaldi's Four Seasons.
Our next stop was down the hill to the opposite end of the Royal Mile, where we encountered the Palace of Holyrood House and Queen Mary's Bathhouse. couldn't see the palace because Queen Elizabeth was staying there at the time we were here. So instead we decided to go over to the Queen's Gallery and see artwork collected by the Royal House. Queen's Gallery was opened in 2002 and features a changing program of exhibitions which showcase works from the Royal Collection and includes paintings, drawings, and sculptures by some of the world's most renowned artists. The Royal Collection is one of the largest and most important art collections in the world. coat of arms of Scotland with the lion representing England and the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland. Our next stop is the Royal Museum of Scotland which contains an incredible amount of history, art, and just some fun stuff, including this rather incredible millennium clock. There's a good amount of science in the museum, but what was most interesting to me as a mathematician were the artifacts of John Napier, who invented logarithms. There was also a fairly large section of fashion artifacts. Another really great exhibit was the area on Scottish history. Here is Dolly the sheep, who was cloned from an adult cell.
Charles Rennie McIntosh was a Scottish architect, designer, and artist who's considered one of the most important figures of the Art Nouveau movement. He was born in Glasgow in 1868. Finally, we head over to the Scottish National Gallery to get a look at some more fine art. We went out to the Royal Highland Center and enjoyed the fair and also enjoyed a youth bagpipe band from Inverness. Finally, a youth orchestra here at the Highland Center, and then we head off to Inverness. <laughs> 